And so tell me then about them, about your parents, about your family, about your... I come from a family of uh, nine brothers and nine sisters. Wow. Uh, uh, well, nine boys, nine girls. and uh, So I had nine sisters and eight brothers. Plus two others, which I are technically, biologically my nephews, but they are my brothers because my parents raised them from infancy, like months old. Right, right. Uh, so they are m my brothers. So there I'm saying there are 20 of us. Wow. And my mother and father. And your mother and father must have been very tired. <laughs> yeah, but you... <laughs> <laughs> They were quite spectacular. Mm -hmm. I say that from a point of total objectivity, mm -hmm. which I learned to do over the years. Because again, as I say, my thinking, my observation, all that started when I was 18 months old. I remember it well. But we can get into that another time. Mm -hmm. So therefore, uh, my observing my mother and father, even though I didn't have the vocabulary at the time to say, articulate that, and it wasn't my way anyway, I kept everything inside, but even if I could, I, I was existing on pure emotion, mm -hmm. pure, uh, always feelings, always, uh, whether that be watching people, observing colors, do it or whatever. That shaped me. How did it shape you in uh, terms of your brothers and sisters? How were they different from you? Well, naturally, coming from a family so large, you are existing in a microcosm of society. <laughs> you were very different mm -hmm. uh, and very alike. And, of course, being instructed by the same two teachers, even though uh, there have been many times when I say, my God, what are you doing? I mean, we can't have come from the same people, but the same parents. But that just accentuates the differences. Um, we, naturally, because of the size of the family, had to operate like a unit. Uh, while we were in that, we never did anything other than what anybody else would do. You complain a lot, you do da 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 da, da <laughs> but you don't. You don't really talk. Uh, 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 you know, think much about the dynamic that is going on. That's mm -hmm. something you understand later. later. Uh, it, it, it was my first teaching in how to deal with very, uh, uh, very uh, uh, large, uh, uh, different people, a very large group of different people. Mm -hmm. Society, as a matter of fact. Yeah. There's a microcosm of that right there happening. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, so, the most important thing, as I say, we, we, we learned the, uh, why it was vitally important to act as a unit. Because if you didn't, everything would fall to pieces. Right. And so, therefore, uh, everybody had to do everything. Which was another thing that helped me later on down the road in dealing with big societal issues like... Uh, 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 you know, misogyny and feminism and da 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 da. He was all taught to his right back there. Look, dishes need to be done. Don't nobody care if you're male or female. Do the damn dishes, okay? <laughs> That's it. Now, the, you know, the yeah. floor needs to be swept, okay? Mm -hmm. Wood needs to be chopped each mm -hmm. evening, mm -hmm. okay? Bring in the kindling, bring in the wood, bring in the coal. Now, if the person who was assigned that was not there to do that because of something else, mm 
Someone else had to do it. Mm -hmm. And it made no difference if you wore a skirt or a pair of pants. Mm -hmm. You dragged the coal in. Mm -hmm. You chopped the, you know, 